talking about the first three of the seven gates of Gedula, mercy. Okay, the first three is two linear gates and one triangular gate. Now, the first gate for Gedula goes from Kether, follows the hidden path to Gedula, and then back. So, we start in Kether, the unity, the infinite, infinite I that encompasses all that exists, the awareness that is the one thing, everything. And we look down at Gedula and travel along the hidden path to Gedula. Now what that does is it brings the eye directly into the collective of all awareness. All of those solitary selves have realized that they are all alike, that they share commonality. And here in this realm, like attracts like. So everything in this realm of Gedula, all of the solitary selves are connecting with each other and finding commonality. And the eye comes down and experiences its unity through commonality. That's the thing about awareness. Awareness likes to stick together. It likes to unify supernally. It's unification where it becomes absolutely one thing undifferentiated. But here in the realm of Gajula, awareness is differentiated. So it wants to still unify because that's its natural state. Its natural resting state is the I. But in Gajula, it's collectivizing. It collectivizes. It becomes a collective awareness in Gedjula, and that is the influence of Kether, of the crown, of the eye upon Gedjula. So, at coming downward along this path, the awareness goes from a unity to a grand collective in Hawkman the collective of all awarenesses. All the solitary selves are united in Gajula, in this grand collective, in echo of Kether, of the eye. So coming back up this path is a transition from the collective to the unified. Okay, And as the universal experience of this path, you learn about the difference between the unity and the collective. What is the difference between a unified awareness and a collectivized awareness? Okay, And uh, with that knowledge comes the ability to make use of that knowledge okay. <clears throat> in ways that will only become apparent when you work this gate deeply enough, okay? Really focus in on that difference between collectivity and unification, okay? <clears throat> At the personal level, we again start in the eye, 
but we come down this time to just our little singular discrete solitary self that reflects just a bit of the I and we feel the I entering us and connecting us through all of our fellow uh, solitary selves. It is the power that connects us. Okay? And we understand through this descent and then the reversal of returning to absolute I-ness, infinite I, down to that solitary self as part of the collective, and then back up, etc. We learn the dynamic in our own self that urges us to merge. We understand that urge to merge within ourselves, the strength and power of that urge to uh, partake in a collective awareness, to partake for us in the human collective awareness. This is where the human collective of awareness is born. It's where all of the sub-collectives of awareness are born, is here in Kajula. So for us, it is our connection to the grand collective, but more importantly, more crucially, our connection to the human collective awareness. And from this, we can learn how to strengthen that connection, how to take advantage of that connection to the collective awareness. And what is the source of all collective awarenesses? and the will to collectivize. So that is the first gate. The second gate is also a linear gate. And this is a connection between Hokma and Gajula, between wisdom and mercy or loving kindness. Okay? This is the path of Jupiter and the letter Gimel, which means camel. So for this case, from the universal perspective, we start in Hokma, that infinite ocean of meaning, because I am. I exist. I am this. This is an undifferentiated infinitude of essential meanings, okay? It is all essential meaning unified. It is the unity of parts in Hakma. How we look down into Gedjula, the collective of so this is the descent along this path of Jupiter from the unity of parts to the grand collective of parts. It is essential meaning, a different dimension, shall we say, of essential meaning. It is essential meaning that has been differentiated. That is the difference between the collective and the unity. The unity of parts. It's all undifferentiated. It's all there at once, everywhere. 
in the collective it's differentiated into an infinite number of bits of essential meaning that are expressed as sentient, I mean, as solitary, as solitary selves, each composed of a certain number of uh, essential meanings in a certain ratio. So that infinitude of essential meaning is translated into solitary selves through this journey of Jupiter. So, <clears throat> it's an expansion from this one thing that is infinite to this infinite number of finite things. So, in that sense, it is an expansion, a complexification <laughs> from the unity to the collective. And all of this essential meaning in Gajula is connected. It all relates to itself. Infinite connectivity, okay? And the reverse journey takes us again from the collective to the unity. And this time, it's from the collective of essential meaning to the unity of essential meaning, okay? And we learn from this that connection, that translation, what is involved in that translation from the unity of essential meaning to the collective of essential meaning. That translation is important. It is an aspect of the Akasha. It is part of the process of the Akasha, that phase between the undifferentiated and the differentiated. Here is the undifferentiated essential meaning to the differentiated essential meaning and back, sort of undoing that process as well. So you'll gain incredible understanding, which of course, as always, you can then apply. Okay? So, from the personal perspective, we again start in that I am. That is the overwhelming sensation to the individual awareness when it travels to Hakma, is I am. I exist. And this is what I so, we travel down the path of Jupiter into Gajula, into our solitary self in Gajula as part of collective awarenesses. Part of the grand collective of all the solitary selves and part of the human collective. And here is the direct influence of essential meaning and our quantity of essential meaning passes down this path of Jupiter into our solitary self. This is the enlivening of our solitary selves with our own essential meaning that we alone express. Okay? It gives us this beautiful gift 
that we in turn have to offer the cosmos. It is the essence of our being to offer this gift to the cosmos and complete the cosmos in this way that only we can. Okay? And we are connected with all of the solitary cells in that process of each of us giving our gift to the cosmos. In this way, creating, causing the cosmos. That is the gift of Jupiter. The great blessing that Jupiter bestows is this gift of our own essential meaning. And then we travel back up this path of Jupiter to the infinite, undifferentiated ocean of essential meaning of I am. And in that passage, we learn ever so much about our own specific quantity of essential meaning and how we fit into the infinite, okay? We learn so much from this path in both directions. <clears throat> so much that we can then apply. Okay? Now the third gate is a triangular gate. The triangles contextualize, okay? All of the triangular gates are about contextualizing the linear gates. So this particular gate contextualizes what we have already covered in terms of that transition between the undifferentiated and the differentiated, between the unity and the collective. It contextualizes that with the I am, that realization of the I that it exists. So, how does that fit into this context, okay? That is what this gate is all about. So, we begin in Hakma and travel from the universal perspective. We are that infinite ocean of essential meaning. We are what I am. <laughs> we are that infinite ocean of essential meaning. We pass down Jupiter and convert from that unity of essential meaning into the collective of essential meaning expressed as an infinite number of solitary cells, an infinite collective of solitary cells. Then we pass up along that hidden path together to the infinite eye, undifferentiated, leave behind all thought, all awareness of collective, collectivity. And then we pass down that path of Aries, of He. And we realize that we exist, that I am. Okay? And then we pass back to the infinite eye. And we descend 
the eye descends and fills that infinite collectivity, that infinite collective of solitary cells and then rises back up to the infinite undifferentiated ocean of essential meaning. Okay? Now, what you will discover, especially as you pass from Kether to Hakma, as you realize the I am, uh, you will understand how much, how significant that urge to merge is and how uh, important the collectivizing of awareness is to the whole of awareness, how fundamental that desire, what I call the urge to merge, how fundamental that is throughout all of awareness, even in its most polarized states, that urge to merge, that collectivization, is fundamental at every level of awareness. And this gate is the, the epitome of that, the importance of that need, okay? So at a personal level, it's much the same. We start in Hawkmoth in that infinite, undifferentiated, essential meaning, and we pass down through the path of Jupiter with that blessing of our own quantity of essential meaning <clears throat> in Kedjula, as we stand as a solitary self within the collective awareness, the grand collective and the human collective. We are representative. We represent ourself. We express ourself within both of those collectives. And then we rise up along the hidden path to the eye leaving behind, watching that all, all those concerns just disintegrate and pass away as we enter the I, the infinite I. And then we realize that we exist. that we are this infinite ocean of essential meaning. And then we reverse. We pass up again into the infinite simplicity of the I. And then we descend with the I. We bring the I down into our solitary self, shining amidst the collectives in Gajula. And then we pass with our little quantity of essential meaning back up the path of Jupiter into Hokman, that infinite ocean of essential meaning. And again, we have learned how fundamental that urge to merge is in the makeup 
of our own awareness. And consequently, in the makeup of every awareness around us. All of other shares in that makeup of awareness, in the way that awareness is constructed, we are all the same. We all experience this urge to merge to exactly the same degree and in exactly the same way. And with that knowledge, um, you can make a lot of very good use. <laughs> so, <clears throat> next time will be the four, uh, the remaining four gates of Gedula. All right. Till then, bye bye.